when I was editing this video, I realized how long it was. So I made this little clip to add at the beginning to warn you, it is a lengthy video. Uh, and it's a lot longer than I intended. I want it to be thorough uh, for owners of the 403 tension. Uh, but what I found was three parts in this tension unit itself were damaged. And uh, I was able to repair them. But I decided to film the repairs because um, the, these damages were, were fairly common when you buy a uh, vintage, used vintage machine and somebody's had a tension problem and attempted it uh, to repair it and not knowing what they're doing. So that's the reason for the length. I'm, I'm sorry it's this long, but... Um, you know, I, I put up a new video every three and a half days, so just pace yourself on this one <laughs> if it's too long for you. And the other thing is, I'm, I'm going to put in the description below the video the start times for the different procedures that I'm doing here. So if you come back to look at it and say, well, where does the part about... Um, zeroing out the tension unit where does that start you'll be able to see it in the description and click on it and go right there okay that's it on with the show this is Andy too this video is about the needle thread tension system on a Singer model 403A I've decided to do this next in the series because the poor thing, uh, the tension unit itself here, has been beat up and misinstalled and uh, I've actually knocked parts off of it a couple times while I'm, I've been working on the machine. So I'm going to uh, take a look at it now and, and tell you about. Uh, one part of the needle thread tension system that some of you may not know about and have never seen before is this part in here now since since I have the needle bar and the presser bar and the vibrating bracket take up lever system all that out you're gonna get a real good look at this part in here and it's called the tension pin releasing lever and it's this lever right here and the levers held in place by a hinge screw so that it can hinge or rock now I've taken out the presser bar lifter lever here but when that when that lever is here and when it's lifted up a little a little uh, pin on the back of it pushes on this part of the releasing lever and just rocks it. You see it only rocks it about an eighth of an inch. And what's that doing is pushing this part of the lever against the tension releasing pin that is supposed to be sticking out of a hole <laughs> in, in the wall of the machine here and you may just be able to see this dark spot back there and maybe you can see the shiny pin sitting flush with the wall it's supposed to be sticking out a little bit so when the lever rocks against it it pushes against the release pin okay and then this spring that's attached on the top of the lever is what pushes the lever back away from the release pin when you put the presser foot down. And the tension release pin is inside the stud that's in the, the uh, tension unit here. And that pushes back on a tension spring inside, which, which I'm going to show you. And it pushes back on the spring to release tension on the tension discs. That spring pushing the tension discs together 
is what puts tension on the needle thread as it passes through the unit. How much tension is controlled by turning this thumb nut. So when you lift your presser foot lever and the release lever rocks against the pin, pushes the spring back inside, releases tension on those discs so you can thread it and also so there's no tension on the thread when you go to pull your work out from under the needle right after you've sewed your theme uh, seam so I wanted to show you this and I'm gonna take it out here and give you a better look at it this is just a standard lefty Lucy and yeah, okay it may never have been loosened or taken out but you also also may find that it has worked loose and when you're lifting your presser bar lever the pin is missing the release lever and not pushing against the tension pin here. So I couldn't resist since I got the machine stripped down this much. I, I had to show you this, right? Whoop. I'll give you a look at that hinge screw in a second. But you can see now where the pin from the presser bar lifting lever would rest here. And since that hinge screw is at the bottom, rocks like that. You see a little dark spot right there. That's what's where it's been pushing on the tension release pin in the tension unit. And this is a little uh, kind of funnel shaped spring that rocks it back so the pin is released and the spring in the unit can put tension back. Now, here's the, so there's that. And it, this can be bent, by the way, um, when it gets all mucked up. You see it's pretty, it's pretty mucky back in there. And, and I've had it where it's uh, kind of been frozen and somebody has just forced that lever up as, you know, to get it to move. And because the screw the screw and everything is frozen solid in there this part just bends up <laughs> and then then the lever won't work properly anymore and here is the hinge screw that holds it and just for those of you that don't know it's a hinge screw a screw because it has threads versus a stud which is smooth and usually held in place with a set screw to the side and it's a hinge because this part under the head of the screw see how it's bigger and smoother and that is so the put this back in here that is so this lever can hinge on it so the lever doesn't touch any part of the threads. It just rides on that flat hinging part. And that's how you tighten this screw all the way. You deadhead it in as, as far as it'll go. But it's just spaced perfectly to allow this to hinge or rock back and forth. Okay. Now maybe you can see a little bit better the the spot where that pin and maybe you can just barely see that shiny shiny end of the pin. It's a little steel pin like a finishing nail size right there that is supposed to be sticking out like I said. So it may not be sticking out because it goes in a hole in the stud and it might be all full of crud and stuck in there or this may have been 
assembled wrong. Well, part of it at least is assembled wrong. <laughs> but uh, we're going to find out. So, while I'm at this position, I want to show you how to remove the entire unit all in one piece. Okay. And it's held in place by this tension stud set screw. Right there's the head of it. Okay. Now, if you're here looking whoops, for information about a different model than one of these uh, slantomatics, you may have uh, a hole through the top that comes down and you may see a tension uh, a tension stud, stud set screw screwed in from up above okay but this type of tension unit is very very common to vintage singers with some minor changes on the thumb screw um, but even if you're not here on a 400, 401, 403, 301, uh, 500, 503 Rocketeer, one of those machines, this is still going to be giving you a lot of good information. Okay, anyway, so um, the other thing is this tension unit, I like, I like to joke about this, has the longest and shortest set screws on the machine. Hmm. That's the long and the short of it. So, if we loosen this one, <clears throat> then a, f a few turns like that, uh, that's going to release the tension stud. I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way out. I mean, you normally wouldn't need to do this unless you wanted to. But I want to show you what I mean by the longest pin. Now it doesn't have threads all the way. Part of it's just the post. But there you go. It's, as far as I know, the, the longest set screw on the machine. Okay. And when you get that out, you can take the tension unit now and the idea is not the thread guards that are screwed to the machine but the tension unit itself can be pulled out of the machine as a unit mm -hmm. and there there you can see the end that I was seeing of that tension pin. There, it came out a little bit more now. Uh -huh. Now it's not going to come all the way out. I'll show you later that the other end of that pin is flanged so it doesn't fall through. But in the machine, uh, it should be sticking out more like that. Okay, and it, and it wasn't. And pushing it in, I don't feel any tension spring or anything pushing against it. Um, this spring has been installed. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's installed wrong. And this indicator back here, which is, has your plus and minus, it's on upside down. They have the plus and minus towards the bottom. Hmm. So uh, no wonder this thing has a few, a few things going for it. And I can turn it way past uh, zero, you know. <laughs> so we're going to have to just like take it apart, which I would do anyway, right? To, to show you about how it works. But I wanted to show you if you want to take the whole thing off. Some people like to take it off. Uh, the whole thing, clean it, clean the little hole it goes in, and reassemble it on the bench, and then put it back in and do a final adjustment on it. So I kind of showed you both ways here. Here's how to take it off if you want to. Mm -hmm. And I better show you this. When you go to put it back on, 
this little finger up here of the thread guard goes in a little hole up in the upper thread guide thread guide right there so and it should push in all the way and then you'll see the very end of the stud here and then the pin sticking out of it okay then of course you would you would put your tension stud set screw back in to hold it in place all right are we having fun <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is dismantle this tension unit and uh, talk about the pieces and then I'm going to clean them and then we're going to put them back on uh, properly and uh, I'm going to zero out the unit or adjust it to zero tension. Now on this little silver ring you see in the front that is a uh, let me think about that for a minute it, this it's a it's a knurled knob the thumb nut is also called the knurled knob and uh, this little silver ring that looks so pretty in the front is called the thun, thumb nut cap okay thumb nut cap and it is held in place by the smallest set screw on the machine which I'm trying to figure out how I can show you that maybe if I carefully lean that over like that whoop And you see the head of that set screw right there in the side of the thumb nut. Right? So the thumb nut cap has a little collar that goes, goes in there. And you tighten it to keep this cap on. That's one of the reasons you tighten it. So I want to take out that little, um, that little tiny set screw. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to magnetize my little tension screwdriver here for a moment because I, I have a tendency to lose that little uh, set screw. And I'm trying to pull it out and it bounces off the machine, bounces off my workbench, bounces off my wood floor and then it's very hard to find. Usually I have to get my vacuum and put a new vacuum bag in it and vacuum all around and then cut the bag open and dig it out of the dust. Let's see if that's enough. So, uh, let's see. It's just a little guy. But you'll see what I mean about the longest and the shortest set screws. Sorry, I'm working around the camera here, and up, oh, up, oh, oh whew. good thing I magnetized it, huh? Because it was ready to jump right off. <laughs> Wee! Look at that. Talk about a grain of rice, huh? Okay, so I love these little magnetized dishes from the dollar store because <laughs> it's a steel screw so it will stay in there now okay so let's see if I can if that uh, nut cap will come off or if it's stuck on there too uh, let's see there. Okay.
it's pretty some of some of the older models don't have this and it's just kind of an opening uh, around the area I like this it's it's part actually part of the system to hold this uh, to hold this uh, thumb nut onto a flange that's here and then it holds this cap on also okay now we usually just call this the thumb nut uh, some people call it the knurled because it's got little ridges knurled thumb nut or thumb knob and that's fine we'll mostly call it the thumb nut but just so you know Singer called it the tension indicator flange adapter thumb nut mm -hmm. we joke that Singer had a whole department to think up of names so you, you see the ridge now so you can get a good grip on it and you see where the cap fits inside and the little uh, screw holds it and it's threaded back here in the back because it, it, it screws onto the tension indicator flange adapter right the tension indicator flange adapter but to get this adapter which is this threaded thing here and I'll show you why it's called flange. We first have to take off the uh, tension indicator flange. And that's called indicator because it has the numbers. You see the numbers on there? Mm -hmm. Now this is made out of aluminum. Okay. Now we can see the uh, tension indicator flange adapter and that allows an adaption from the tension stud to the thumb nut, right? This is threaded and the outside of the flange adapter is threaded so you can twist it on. The thing is, the inside of it is threaded also because it screws right on the end of the tension stud. And I just heard a part fall out. I'll find it in a second. So this goes on and this is actually what pushes back against the spring I'm going to show you and which pushes back on the discs okay and then this covers it and allows you to you know uh, gauge it by the numbers on it and then the thumb nut and cap hold it on right otherwise when you were trying to set your tension <clears throat> you could just keep turning it and turning it until it fell off hey, hey okay now what's supposed to be on here is um, a flange stop washer and that's what that's what fell out and bounced off the machine this is a washer with a center bar. This one has a little curved finger. They usually have some kind of a finger sticking up, and I'll explain why later. But the idea of that bar in the center is because it goes in the slot of the stud so that it doesn't turn when you turn, when you turn the flange adapter, right? it rests against the stop washer and that that uh, stop washer won't turn and the stop washer stops the spring from coming out mm -hmm. 
So next, let's let's take a look at the spring here. There we go. This is the tension unit spring. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, let's see, it's called the beehive spring. Nicknames here. And it's called the pyramid spring. But Singer just called it the tension spring. And you see the 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 last smallest coil in the front goes halfway and has a 90 degree bend in it and that's to fit in the tension stud slot so it doesn't turn either it it doesn't turn freely Now we get to see the actual tension indicator. Ta-da! You see it's got that bar through the center. Same thing because this, this slot should be horizontal. They've got this installed wrong. The slot in, in here should be horizontal. And the same thing this uh, center bar is to is to go in there and keep it from turning and it's called the indicator flange because it indicates plus or minus negative or positive so when you're turning your thumb nut left that's supposed to be less tension when you turn it right it's more tension and this indicates the direction so that's why it's called the indicator flange Okay, and you see it's kind of uh, cupped inside there in a little raised portion and that's so that the tension spring fits in there so nicely, right? Okay, and you can see somebody's played with this and actually this bar is bent in a little bit from somebody forcing it so hard that the tension pin uh, bent that a little bit but they didn't break it on the later years where this is plastic you frequently will find that bar bent and broken because it's plastic this one is okay just a little bent yay the next group of parts here actually go on and off as a group of uh, five parts and the part that you see here on the on the outside is called the uh, thread take up spring thread guard and then you see the thread take up spring and then with it are the three tension discs. Three tension discs because you can put two threads in this machine and two needles and you can double needle sew. So you have to have separate tension systems for each thread. So you have three discs. And then this uh, thread, the uh, mm, take up spring, is uh, put around that as a group. The little single loop here in the front with the big loop, the check part, and then a bigger coil in the back of all those tension discs like so and you'll see in the back of the uh, check spring or take up thread take up spring the last coil here is also bent at a 90 degree it just goes about a sixteenth of an inch and I call it the spring tail because the stud in the back here 
has like uh, gearing and that's how you adjust the tension of the check spring depending on which gear you put that tail in like if you put the tail way over here then there's not much tension but when you're adjusting it if you put the pin with uh, the tail to the other side then it creates a lot more tension on the coil and you have a snappier uh, spring action so that's the thread take up spring also called the check spring okay and we'll get a, a little better look here at this thread take up spring thread guard mm -hmm. couple couple uh, things here of course it holds the tension disc it helps keep everything lined up with this arm that goes into the hole up here when you when you put it on the stud mm -hmm. and then uh, it gives you a positioning finger for the thread so the thread will stay lined up with the disc and that's also aluminum then we have our three tension discs and these are steel and these are a flat style they're not dished so they don't have to be a certain way you know and all three of them are the same okay so technically you can put them front to back back to front this one in the front or in the back and so forth technically okay now one side has the part number the name and the part number stamped in there so a lot of techs will put that name and part number facing the front of the machine okay ta-da okay then what's left here is a couple of thread guides and they're held to the machine with one screw right there okay and I'm going to take that out. This screw holds both thread guides to the machine. And this screw is also used to set the stroke of the take-up spring. How far the spring uh, travels and the timing of the spring to the needle point. It's a nice little round-headed, uh, polished steel screw. Is that steel? Yeah. It's yeah. It's sticking in my magnetic bowl, <laughs> so it's steel. So this thread guard uh, in the front, it's got a big old long name: the Slack Thread Regulator and Tension Thread Guide slack thread regulator and tension thread guide this parts the regulator and this part is the guide that when you are threading the needle you take your thread as it comes down the arm and you slide it across this guide and it'll pop right in between tension disc okay show you that part and uh, we also so refer front, to this the front guide or the small guide and then this part let me put it kind of back where it belongs there with the screw hole lined up and the, the armhole lined up um, Singer called that the thread guide upper hmm. because as the thread comes off the needle arm thread guide it goes through this thread guide so they called it the thread guard upper 
We call we also call it the big thread gar guide and the back thread guide because it, it goes on first so it ends up in the back behind this one okay and it also has the tension unit area thread guide on it so a little double purpose there mm -hmm. this can use a good cleaning okay now, inside that slot is the tension pin thing I'm telling you about. Oh, that oh, that looks a little bent, doesn't it? Darn it, man! People really mess these things up, and you can't you can't buy a new one. Uh oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna take it out again. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this out again because I'm gonna clean it anyway. But we're going to look at the stud, and I, I want to get that pin out of there to show you exactly what that pin looks like. You know? Now, I know a lot of you have watched other tension videos on my channel, and this is, and it's probably this one is boring if you're even still <laughs> watching it. <laughs> but, you know, it's a new machine, and people come here looking for Model 403 when they search YouTube, so... That's why I'm going into detail. Okay, you remember that. So I want to show you this stud because the gearing thing here that I call the gearing or flanges, this was covered up by the spring before. So you can see what I call about where you, where you put that uh, when you're adjusting it, it where you put that tail on the spring see the tail at the top you might turn it this way to get uh, more spring action more resistance or you might turn it this way mm -hmm. and uh, on on the original vintage springs that that if this is hanging down at six o'clock this little tail is usually right around one o'clock on an aftermarket spring they make these brand new by the way and you can buy these if, if your spring is worn out or damaged but the the little spring tail is in a different location so you have to know where that tail is when you're putting your unit together let's see now if I can get this uh, to come out yeah it it, it kind of wants to I can see it's trying to get out but I, I don't know if you can see that that's this has been bent a little bit and that's unfortunately not uncommon when people don't realize and the tensions not working right now well, I'm gonna tighten it more I don't have any tension maybe I need to tighten it more and more and more and more <laughs> hmm. and also machines can tip over and it usually hits right on the tension unit here and bends it too so we're gonna see if we can uh, straighten that out and repair it or if we're gonna have to try and find a replacement on eBay but I gotta get that pin out to show you and I just push it out. I think it's stuck because the the stud is bent. Oh, come on, you. They're starting to come out now. Okay. Yeah, and it's all it's all crudded up, right? So, hmm. No wonder it wasn't moving around much in there. But remember that I told you that one end was flanged. So that flange makes it bigger than the hole that it goes in. So when you, you stick it in from the front and you stick the, the little pointy end out for the lever to hit, but this flange keeps it from going falling into the machine inside. So this, this tension uh system actually was in pretty good shape for the machine i've seen a lot better i've seen a lot worse 
uh, you know, the tension pin releasing lever and everything was in great shape. Just needs cleaning. The crossbar of the indicator flange is minorly bent in a little bit, but no, no big deal. Uh, all the other parts look good, and the the, the check spring or are, are, um, call it the check spring, but the take up spring. That that's in uh, good condition, really. Not all bent and twisted up. So this is the the big problem right there. This is the problem. And unless you take the tension unit apart when you're looking at a used machine, you don't know that's what you're going to find, right? <laughs> okay, but first I'm going to clean them. So I'm going to gather up all the parts and uh, except I don't clean that tiny little set screw. I keep it in its own separate little magnetized dish <laughs> and uh, so because I'm just afraid of losing one mm -hmm. now um, I put this in a like a plastic bowl and uh, I let, let it soak and that mild of a solution only needs to soak a, a minute or two and then I'll pull them out and, uh, you know, if there's some built up stuff that didn't come off, I'll brush it with a toothbrush or if it's very stubborn, I have brushed it with a, uh, a wire uh, finishing brush, finishing detail brush. These come two for a dollar at my nearby dollar store. One is brass and one is uh, steel, you know. And uh, let me show you the steel one. And they get they get all uh, bent out of shape and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. But if something is really bad on there, or sometimes in a screw th thread, if it's really gunky, I'll have to use that. And then I blow them dry with the blow dryer. And... Uh, I put a little oil on the spring and the screws on the set screw and on the hinge screw because a couple times I didn't blow dry them and I just left them there and they got some flash rust. So after that I just put a little oil on those parts. So I'm going to do all can that. use like just dish dish soap like like joy or something like that um, you know mild soap um, before I found the crud cutter I used to just soak them in the 50% alcohol for a while you know while I'm doing something else but I like to clean them all off so that's what I'm gonna do up oh, almost almost uh, I got everything, yep. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, let's see all of these clean parts now. I, uh, I just, uh, these, these parts I just sprayed uh, quickly with uh, crud cutter and rinsed them right off because they're very seldom that dirty and crud cutter can affect paint so if you if you just want to clean these with like uh, soapy water or something that's fine too you could clean all these parts with just the soapy water um, and it uh, spraying the rest of these and letting them soak a minute or so everything came out clean I did use the little steel brush on the threads because I like to be sure that I get those all clean and uh, it, it did got got everything uh, clean brush that out and I, I brushed the threads on the stud out 
and we can take a closer look at this stud now because it definitely um, has a bend to it here uh, like it, it's got pinched somebody over tightened it or um, didn't have it assembled properly like when you go to put this a flange adapter on which by the way if, if some of you have the service manual um, the only one I've ever seen is is just for the 401 class and it uh, they don't have like a separate one that I've ever seen for the 403 or 404 and this piece isn't shown in the diagram the the tension unit in the service manuals that I have seen um, have this is a different part and it has a post sticking out of the back here that goes into a hole on the tension indicator mm, uh, flange and that's how you you set it you push this back against the spring and you turn the pin to a different hole for more or less and and that's like the tension unit of the 301 so if you have the uh, and you might you might have that type on your 401 you, you may have that uh, type um, but you may more likely most of the ones I've seen are this style and uh, if you don't see this on your diagram and you haven't seen a video like I'm doing it's confusing because you kind of have this extra part and I think that's maybe where some people get in trouble but anyway uh, this is bent and I've seen this before uh, five or six up to five or six years ago I could buy one of these new on so classic but then they quit carry them I don't think they could get them anymore and uh, the only way I'm aware of buying one now is buying a used one and I've never seen just the stud for sale you know it's usually the whole tension unit or sometimes part of the tension unit is missing and part of it's there so uh, I, I always try and fix this and so far I've been able to do them um, but let me show you I, uh, I took a 404 tension unit apart and took out its stud so that maybe we maybe you could see the one on my right here is a normal my line, I'm trying to look at these through the through the camera to give you a good a good turn them at the same an angle so you can see the gaps so I'm hoping that you see this one is kind of bent and pinched right <laughs> and uh, one one way to see if you're going to have a problem is to take your tension indicator you know with that center bar across it and put it in the stud and see if it will go all the way back and if it can move a little bit when it's back there or if it gets hung up mm -hmm. and, and you see this this one I borrowed is good, but the one that I found on my machine, I, I can't get the, uh, really get this, the thing back in there. If it was in there, I could get it out, you know. And uh, another way is to take something that's about the size of the space. This is just a, a, an Allen wrench and stick it stick it through there and then try and pull it out the front and see I get right about there and it starts hanging up because it's pinched 
I can force it because it's aluminum so it'll give a little bit you know and pull it through where where is, is on the stud that's uh, not damaged it just uh, you know it can go right in the front and just slide in and out very easily so the thing to do with this is to try and bend it back right <laughs> to, to try and get it in the shape and most of the bend you see how this area here narrows a little bit before the threading um, that's where you you try and do the bending is right there um, because if you just grab it out on the tip and bend it may bend up closer to the threads and get worse so I've tried different things over the years as uh, screwdrivers uh, if you want to go back and look at some of my other videos where I've done this um, see like, where is that yeah here's a here's a a thick screwdriver bit that will go in to the back part okay where it hasn't been damaged and then you, you try and slide it out and that can open it up somewhat but since this is uh, like aluminum you know it's just flexing it, it straightens it out a little bit but not completely okay so you usually are going to, or I have anyway, found I have to get inside there with something, either a plier or a, I'm, I'm, digging a, I'm digging a quarter out of my can here. I have used a coin before too and uh, tried to go in here and force it out to approximately the spot that I want to bend and see how can I explain this I try and hold it this part here with my plier so I can take the coin just where it starts narrowing down because that's usually where it's been bent and use that coin to try and bend bend it back up that I got a, I got a little bit better but not much the, the problem is with this method is when you're trying to hold this with your plier you might squeeze it and and put it closer together right <laughs> so you're like oops that, that didn't help me out so I also brace it with my thumb here because again if I if I go like this and start bending it might have a tendency to bend it here or up closer to these threads and I want it to bend in this narrow area because that's usually uh, where it has been malformed so I'm going to kind of push down with this thumb and lift up with the coin and uh, it's tougher than you it's it's stronger than you think and of course you're going to do this at your own risk right <laughs> you have to get it uh, separated enough to get the indicator flange on there right and allow movement but you don't want to separate it so much that later you can't get the flange adapter on it and you can't let this stay pinched or you may not get free movement of the pin so that that moved it some I'm trying to see which one I feel is is bent it's tricky this this one looks uh, slanted in to me this one looks more flat 
but when I turn it over the one I thought was flat now looks bent out <laughs> and the other one bent in so eh. I'm gonna go back to this one that I feel is bent in and try and bend it out some more just do one at a time here I guess mm. And I'm sure that there's people more mechanical about this than I am, or maybe some kind of a vice or or tool that they think, why is he doing it that way? Here's how you should do it. <laughs> and uh, more power to you, believe me. This is, uh, you know, I'm a self-taught mechanic here. Um... They didn't really have a bunch of stuff on YouTube when I started doing this. Turn the other one here and see if I can get it. <clears throat> it's starting to look a little bit better. See if I can get this flange in here. Hmm. Almost. Really, the flange is going to sit back in here, but the stop washer, where's my stop washer, is going to sit up. Hey, where is my stop washer? Here it is. Whew. It's going to sit uh, uh, closer up to this area. So you can't have a crimp in it here or you won't get the free movement of your stop washer. But the stop washer part is looking pretty good here. See how I can I can slide it right on from the front. So if I can get this part to go on, I think I'd be oh good. Okay. Now this part when it's on only moves a little bit like up and up in this area before before it gets smaller that looks pretty good now let's see if I can get the flange to go on here okay that flange goes on almost too easy which means that tip might still be bent in a little bit. Let's see if I can get that back on now. I'm going to get my little washer back on and I'm going to get the flange back on. That's that's too loose. But everything here is is moving freely. So I think I just want to open this flange a little bit. You know if this if this is too loose I'm worried that it's going to vibrate around and change the tension. Maybe it's just because it's so clean. Let me go check my good one here. Now see when I when I put this one on it's very firm. It's very it takes a lot more pressure to 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 turn it. This one it almost you know it's just too 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 loose. So let's see if I've got a screwdriver maybe I can go in and widen this area a little bit mm. not too scientific is it hmm <laughs> didn't change it much at all okay maybe I need a wider something wider in there Let's see if I can a little bit better Let's see if this screwdriver tip is wider uh, boy. don't stab yourself right <laughs> Fixing this stud is taking more than doing the whole rest of the unit, isn't it? Maybe I should have 
put this on high speed. You can skip ahead out of this if, <laughs> if you want. I should have told you that 10 minutes ago, right? <laughs> but this is such a common problem that I, I, want to, I want to bring it up to people. Okay, still that's a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go with this. It's a little bit firmer. It's not as hard as the other one. But I'm, I'm going to try it. Okay. Whew. So. Now we got that somewhat repaired. Let's get uh, putting this thing back together now. Okay. So what I'd like to uh, start with here is putting the stud in and uh, I'll get the tension stud set screw and just let me put a drop of oil on the threads here and I get that started in most of the way. Um, so that when I get the stud uh, centered the way I want it in there or leveled the way I want I just have a few turns to, to crank it down and the first thing you want to be sure that you do when you put it in is get it all the way in it's got to be all the way in one of the ways that you can check that is looking inside and be sure you see the very end of the stud there okay let me pull it out a little bit see now I've just got the hole now I've got it in so you you can tell if you've cleaned the stud and cleaned out the hole you know you, you can tell when it's in there so just just be sure that it's all the way in there okay then you want the slot to be horizontal and that is because your whoops your indicator you want to be up so I usually just put it on there for now and I line up the hash mark between the plus and minus with the hole for the thread guard and I figure that's about as uh, horizontal as I'm going to make it and once I get it there just come back around and tighten up that uh, whoops wrong tighten up that set screw to hold it there Yeah, this is going in like a breeze now. It's all clean and got a little drop of oil on there. And I'll just double check that I'm got it all the way back. Mm-hmm. Nice and snug. Okay. So then I can start uh, putting on the thread guides and I'm going to put the thread guide upper on first because it goes in the back okay <laughs> so maybe I'll get my screw ready to go where's that little round headed screw that holds that on right there so once I get these up here I'll be able to grab this and get my my uh, screw going right in there instead of trying to set it up now if you put something under the front of the machine so by putting something uh, on the front of the machine under it like that screwdriver handle or whatever you have to tilt the machine back a little bit so that when I put these uh, thread guards on 
they're going to tend to stay there and not not fall off okay so I'll put the thread guard upper mm-hmm yep and I'll, I'll put what we call the front or the little one here I'm gonna have to turn that a little bit and I'm gonna have to line them up and get them in place while I put that screw in the other thing that you can do is I'll just take a little wooden toothpick and stick it in that hole up at the top so I can help get these lined up and you'll see there's a flange built in the machine around the hole for the stud and that's what these two pieces fit on if you don't get them around that flange and back against the machine they're going to be uh, crooked then I just want to get this screw started in there so by putting the toothpick in lining up the top hole it helps line up kinda there we go the hole for the screw down here because it goes through a hole up in the back thread guide or the upper thread guide Okay, let me get this back on that flange. Mm hmm Come on. Now you notice this screw goes through the front thread guide. Uh, not through a little round hole, but a slot. And that's because that is adjustable for the stroke. And I think I'm going to show that... Uh, in a later uh, video when I when I do more of the fine-tuning like the the thread gap and and stuff like that so uh, what I would do now is make sure I'm on there and if you see the stop or the rest that little point that sticks out put it even with this tension area thread guide right there so put the top of that point that sticks out line it up with the top edge of this thread guide that comes out mm -hmm. and you can see that is not exactly center it's a little towards the left that puts the screw closer to the left than to center and that's that is a really good uh, starting point anyway for setting the stroke and sometimes you may not even need to reset it okay so have I got this flat and level yes okay next we're going to uh, reassemble our um, five pieces together where we take our three tension discs part number part number part number I like to do and I put them behind the thread guard with the little positioning finger right and then I'm going to take my take up spring or uh, check spring with the single coil in the front and the big multi coil in the back line up all the holes and I'm going to just get them up there on the stud like that okay and you want to be sure that little coil doesn't get into the slot we just want it around the slot and then if you remember this finger 
on the top is going to slide into that hole through the upper thread guide. But when we do that, we want the take up spring or check spring to be in a certain position. Okay, so I'm going to get that lined up here to go in the hole. But before I push it back, I'm going to try and get this pointing straight down at the ground. I want it point. I don't want this over here. I don't want it over there. I want it when I push it back on the on those uh, gear. I call it back here. I want that tail to go in whatever slot back here is going to position that screw straight down. Because that's where normally it sits. Now you can adjust it from there and in the fine tuning later in the series I'll show you if you need to do that how to do it. But line this up straight down before you push it back and get the tail in one of those slots. Okay. Nice. Now at this point I've got to bend the spring up onto the rest and the stop. That little, that little uh, point that comes out is called the, the stop or the rest. So I have to keep this from turning and push it all in. Then I'm just going to take that spring and gently bend it up and around that little point so it now stops or rests on the rest. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Now, I've got my little uh, tension pin here. Remember with the flange edge, I've got it cleaned up. It looks a lot better. I'm going At this point, I'm going to stick it into the hole. And so I don't forget it. And I'll just take, well, here I can use the toothpick. I was going to say my tension screwdriver, but just something to get it pushed back in there. And let's see how it looks now. Now, there you go. You see how this pokes out of here? Before we could just barely see the tip. It's got to stick out somewhat. And I'll show it once we get it all assembled. How it looks so you know what to look for. Now, uh, Somebody emailed me a while back and asked me, what are these three little bumps on the thread guard for? And they are to keep the indicator away from the thread guard so this spring can move. You see how it comes out between these two bumps? So if, if it wasn't for the bumps, this would go on and screw on and it would pinch the check spring so there wouldn't be any mm, there wouldn't there wouldn't be any free movement but now even though I'm pushing you know very hard those bumps make a little space or a little gap if you look here for that check spring to move up and down Next is going to be the tension spring. Beehive spring, pyramid spring. And if you remember, the, the, the biggest coil goes in the back and the littlest coil goes in the front. And that coil's turned at a 90 degree. So, uh, some of the techs I talked to, they said they called it the teacup, that little half coil. Some called it the boat, but it goes on the bottom. Now there's been, in the past, uh, 
people said no it goes on the top and some people said it doesn't matter but when when you have a pin that is uh, like bent like a finger on the stop washer Singer says you need to put that coil on the bottom see how that see how that that pin comes back behind the stop washer and then curves up so that's why on, on this type of a tension unit they say to put that half coil down so that the finger on the stop washer has a space if you put it like so then when you put this on you see how that stop washer is going to be bent forward now because the coils pushing it forward so if you put that half coil down then that finger has a spaced and the stop washer will be flat now some models have a finger that just goes straight up and there is no bend to it it doesn't come back and you know it doesn't come back and then curve up like a finger it's just straight and flat and I think in those cases it doesn't matter if you put this up at the top because the pin that doesn't go backwards and curl forward just goes straight up so it's you know it's it would be uh, that it, it's not going to matter but most of the guys told me they just got in the habit of putting the coil to the bottom so there's a little trivia for you so we put that on and we put it uh, back, all the way back inside there. And then we're going to take that stop washer that will stop the spring from coming forward when the tension pin pushes on the indicator. That's going to move this forward a little bit and that's going to take tension off of the disc and as I said when you have the finger curve point the finger towards you point it forward okay like so very nice let's go back and look at our tension pin for a minute there see it's sticking out a little bit what I want to do is kind of test this to see if everything is going to move okay. So I'm going to put my fingertips against that stop washer just like or I could I could just put this on right now just to get it a, a little bit up there. But when you push against this pin uh it should be uh moving the coil moving this stuff forward so there's no tension so right now I have no tension because I haven't zeroed it out so let me tighten this up and I'll get some tension here okay and Look, this isn't sticking out enough. There's something going on here. This is not sticking out enough. Even though I feel I assembled everything properly, right? And I've got some tension. Maybe I got it too tight. But that should be sticking out more. See, I've got I've got tension. And this should be sticking out enough that, that when the lever pushes it back, you see it move a little bit? And that should release tension, but it's not moving enough. See? Uh-oh. 
So, what is the cause of that? Do you think that the tension pin is too short somehow? It looks like the original one. Do you think that I assembled it incorrectly in the wrong sequence? I don't know. I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty good at that. I think it's because this uh, got a little bit damaged. So let's let's take this back apart here and look at this uh, flange. Or the, or the, sorry, the indicator. So we'll just take this flange adapter off, and I'm going to take my stop washer off. I don't think it's been damaged. I'm going to take my spring out. I'm going to go back to here and I'm just going to push on the indicator and see I don't I don't have this sticking out very far if that lever pushed on it it's going to look I won't you'll see it move forward maybe you can if I get right on the side you see it move forward a little bit See how it moves forward, but it's not it's not enough to remove tension on the disc. And remember me saying that this looked bent, that bar in there, and how the plastic ones can break. And I think this one got bent because it's aluminum. It didn't crack and break in half. It it, it flexed, but I think it's like dished now so the the pin doesn't reach it as well as it should so it can't push it forward mm-hmm so the little rascal so I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab this off of that 404 unit and try that on here to, to see if my theory is correct okie doke so here is the one from my 404, and you notice it, it well, it didn't get as much use, but uh, can't tell from that side. In my left, this is the uh, 404, in the right is this one on my 403. You can see this has got scratch marks from the pin and uh, you probably can't maybe you can in the video but you can't tell that it's dish but here's all I'm going to do is just put it on right and push it back and see if my pin sticks out a little more which I think it does and then I'm going to push push it forward now can you see how can you see how that moves more So let me put my, let's see if this is going to do it. Now if you don't have your stud in all the way, this happens too. The pin won't be long enough because the stud's not all the way in the machine. But I already verified that. Oh wait, I need my, I need my spring on here. So I'm lucky I have another, uh, indicator here to, to play with right see it seems to me like it's moving a little better let's see if it okay with the pin in and this push back this is pretty loose when I let it go and the spring is pushing back now it's tight whoa now it's tight <laughs> So I think just that tiny, okay, here it's, I got tension, see I got tension, and then it's loose. I got tension, and it's loose. So just that tiny bit 
of being bent um, of this center bar being bent has made a difference between an operating and non-operating tension unit. Good lesson as to what happens when something's not working and you try and force it. <laughs> I'll make it work. <laughs> So, what can we do about this, right? Uh, we can try and bend it back, I think. I don't know if the aluminum is going to be too weakened. Um, but let's take... Let's take uh, something. There's a screwdriver handle, maybe. That's just a little bit... Uh, right rounded and it's what what if we go in there and and push it down oh good it's resisting me that means it's pretty strong i can push harder here and see if i can straighten or level that thing out to get it back functioning again. Boy, that just about did it. I don't know if I have a better... I got a better... I'm looking to see if one of my screwdrivers will... Here's a little guy. Will that go in there? Yeah. Okay. I'm pushing, I'm pushing pretty darn hard. <clears throat> too. But it's starting to look level. To me, flat again. So, let's try that. Maybe that's all it's going to take to save this um, indicator and get the tension working again. So, I'll just put that on quickly, slap my spring back on there. You notice I'm, I, well, let me go ahead and put the washer back on. And I'll just put this on. Get it up there enough that I have tension. Mm hmm. And I'm going to push on that pin and see if that fixed it. See it move back and I'm loose. So if I had thread in there I would have tension on it. Let me put more tension and when I push the pin back would it release the tension so I could thread it, and so I could pull my work out from under the needle. I think it will. Let's see how that uh, held up here. Pull this all back off and see if it just, if it's weakened and bent back, or if it stayed pushed back into place. I think, I think it stayed pushed back into place. Mm hmm so uh, the only alternative now is to put it all together and see if it will zero out and function so let's finish uh, the assembly so back on the front side now we'll put our indicator back on there with the plus minus up We'll put our tension spring with the little cup or half coil down. And we'll put our stop washer with the finger pointed at us out. And we'll put the flange adapter on here. And I'm, I'm glad that... Uh, I spread this 
these out a little more because this um, before it was just so pinched it was so loose going on I was worried it wouldn't stay when this goes on now you got to be careful right because there's threads in here and threads here the inside of this can strip so you want to be sure it's very level it's very easy on these to get to get this uh, bent up or down or sideways so uh, I usually just turn it kind of left or backwards a little bit to try and get it seated and then get it on there and it should should feel pretty firm you know when you're putting it on but um, you don't want to you don't want to strip it mm-hmm okay so next is going to be zeroing it out and the way I do that is I want to thread it uh, and set the tension what they call zero out so let me let me dig out the uh, arm cover and put it back up here so I can put a spool of thread and stuff okay right so here we are I've just temporarily set the arm cover on here I don't even have a screw down or anything but I put it in place so I would have a spool pin and I could use the arm cover thread guide so I'm going to uh, thread the tension unit I've got to depress the pin back here because I don't have the presser bar lever lifter to you know do it but I'm going to uh, release tension on the unit and use that slide to get the thread into the unit and uh, get the thread in there right in the positioning finger just like I would if I was going to continue on and thread the needle now <clears throat> let me position the camera and then we'll continue okay so I have this uh, threaded up just like I was going to continue to thread the needle and in the past in these type of videos I have used a tension meter also like a little mini postal scale here that uh, measures tension in grams or ounces and uh, Singer recommended um, on documents that I can find for many of this type of tension unit uh, a, gr a gram pole or, or a tension of 5 to 15 grams when the tension was set to zero now I know that some machines are more than that that would be about a half ounce I believe let me set this on the gram side at 15 and yeah about a half ounce and I know modern machines I've seen online instructions to set the, the tension closer to an ounce but I'm going to show you how the the mm, service manual and repair guide said to do this and and you notice I haven't I haven't put the indicator flange um, you know the numerated dial thing or any of the other parts on here because this is really what sets the tension against the spring and what they said was that when you have the pull here that and it's set to zero you would want this to be barely perceptible barely perceptible that there's tension and you can see this uh, spring coming up the the check spring or the take up spring and and going straight up before I pull there's a lot of tension here so I'm just going to start gently pulling it up and while I'm doing it I'm going to turn this left to reduce tension okay and you see that tension spring going down so there's zero 
I mean there's no there I'm not pulling it at all here I'm pulling the thread through and you see it's barely kicking this up it's just got a little bit of resistance as I pull the thread so I don't know what their idea of barely is but that's about where I do it just like that it starts to move that spring as I'm pulling the thread through now we can put this meter on here and let me set, set it to the grams and I will see how I did here uh, clip 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 it on the thread now it's going to go off st string uh, screen as I as I pull it so you'll have to you'll have to trust me <laughs> or maybe I can point the camera but there I'm pulling it and you see you see where that needle is pointing and for me it's pointing whoops I got to pull it I forgot I got to pull it straight up it's pointing right at about 15 or 16 okay so so that's why uh, I don't I don't use the, the tension meter that much anymore um, when I'm doing this type of a slantomatic because I've just I've done enough of them to know what to expect so I'm, I'm going to do it again down here okay I'm going to pull it straight up and there it is see it's just resting steadily right 15 maybe 16 whoops I can't tilt my camera back anymore okay so I'm going to show you how to do it again without this but there is you see where that uh, arrow is pointing it's at 15 okay which on the other side is just a hair over a half ounce okay right at about a half ounce so if you have some kind of a tension meter uh, great use it but but here's the point that I'm trying to make is that they're just telling their techs that you set it so there's barely perceptible uh, resistance on the thread so you see how it, it just brings the spring up off of the stop and then even though I'm pulling the thread it doesn't pull that up anymore now when there's more tension see how it pulls that sp that spring like straight up and that's before the thread even starts moving through it so that's how I do it I, I purposely put too much tension start gently pulling the thread and while I'm pulling it turn the tension down and when there's enough to lift that spring up and start moving it I figure that's I'm going to call it good so if that is zeroing out the um, tension unit now we have to we have to get the rest of the parts on there and keep it at zero So I'm ready to put on the indicator flange or what I call I like to call it the numerator dial. But behind the zero, where's the zero? Behind the zero on the inside, there's always a little nub or post. And that has to be put on to the right of that little finger on the stop washer that is why that finger is up there it's so that when you turn to to zero it stops because this post hits that finger so when you go to put this on the zero has to be to the right of that finger 
So I just put my this finger, my finger, on like the zero and the five or something. So I know my finger is off to the right. Okay. So I know that that post is over here. Now I've got my thumb nut and I fiddled around and I got my set screw started on it. So I'm going to push this back. And by the by the way, of course your 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 presser foot would be down except when you put the thread through here, the presser foot would be down to create tension. Right? So you're going to push that indicator flange back against everything to to hold it there and then you're going to turn it towards the zero it's actually going to go whoa how come that's not hitting i wondered about that remember this was turning freely the whole time So the post is not hitting this finger. Yep. So here's the, another little thing wrong. <laughs> With somebody over tightening this. I don't know if you remember I mentioned. I wonder if they bent it. I think they bent this finger back by over tightening. And now... When the flange is on here, the finger won't make contact with that post that's behind the zero. It's bent back out of the way. So, and, and you can't, you know, you can't go down to the hardware store and buy one of these. So I'm going to try and bend it back just uh, manually. And boy, the darn thing is, this is steel. So, it's pretty, pretty stiff here. See how that's bent back here? Darn. Attention units, huh? And, and you know, it's funny. that These vintage machines, to me, they can be pretty forgiving. Like, I've had machines that I picked up and tried them out, and they sew. And they, and they sew decently. Then when I get into it, I found out the needle's not quite at the right height. The timing's maybe just a little bit off. Uh, the cam stack isn't zeroed out. You know, the presser foot is a little crooked, things like that. But it still will sew. But if the tension is messed up, forget it. Man, you are not going to sew if the tension is, is messed up. So I guess I should have asked the owner when I went to buy this, hey, can I take the tension unit apart <laughs> and look at it? <laughs> I, I might have I negotiated a lower price, huh? I knew, I thought it was just out of adjustment. I didn't realize all this other stuff was going to be happening with it. Hmm. I don't have another one of these. Uh, it's not so much the finger, it's like the top of the washer has been bent. <clears throat> Well, let's try it. I'll still point the finger out at me. Because some of these don't have a bent finger, right? It just sticks straight up and they work fine. So I think that's just the top of the um, stop washer got bent back over the spring. Somebody tightened it so hard. Okay, I'm going to have to kind of zero it out again.
Okay. Let's try that. The nice thing is you can you can change your tension to your liking. You know, once you get it on there and you try it and you say, hey, this this isn't enough tension. You can take the front couple pieces off and do it over. Let's see now if I put this up here and if I turn it, is it going to hit the, the post? There it is. Now it's stopping when I get to the zero. So that was damaged. So now I've got to hold that indicator flange while I put this thumb nut back on here. And, and don't put it on wrong, which I've done a couple times. You have to put that re recessed area facing you so you can put that little ring in there. Okay. Let's see if we can get this started on here because I want to put this thumb nut on and snug it up against the the uh, indicator flange. There. I don't want to change the the flange adapter because that will change the tension. I just want the indicator flange to be at zero with the post against the finger and I want to kind of snug that up. Okay. Now in this case it, it put my set screw over here on the side which is okay and, and it may be different on yours and then I'm going to put that ring in there and I'm going to take my little tension screwdriver and start tightening that set screw which is going to hold the ring onto the thumb screw. Okay. Mm. Then as I turn it to the right, that's going to put more tension on that spring. And as I turn it left, it's going to put less tension on the spring and of course therefore the thread but I want to make sure it stops around the zero see that so so far so good so did I mess anything up no nah, it's still it's still just barely pulling that up now I'm gonna as I'm pulling up a few inches of it I'm gonna start tightening that tension and it should get harder right away you see this stood right up but it's on, on for me it's getting harder and harder and harder to pull so my tension units uh, putting tension on and it's kind of operating uh, normally now say that I like to, to set these so most people you could sew about a three or a four in that range so when I go to test sew I'm going to set it like at a three or four and I'm going to sew and if that doesn't seem to be enough needle thread tension I'm going to just take these uh, parts off and turn that flange adapter a little bit more so that my zero out position has a little bit more tension if I find that it's too much tension at three or four, I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm going to, hey, what's wrong here? I'm going to, um, oh, I'm out of thread <laughs> at the top, okay. I'm going to, uh, if it's too much tension, I'm going to take the thumb, the, the thumb screw off, you know, and, and the indicator, and I'm going to turn that flange so there's a little bit less when I pull it. Okay? It's not that hard to do. 
you can adjust your tension however you want. And I've talked to people who have bought my machines. One fellow who's making his own like go bags and camping and uh, backpacking stuff. And he was sewing some uh, like ballistic nylon. He's using the heavier thread. So he just adjusted it to put a little bit more tension on this. And, and then he, he was sewing everything fine. So, uh, it certainly uh, can be adjusted by you at any time. Now I'm going to I'm going to back this up to get some slack on here. I'm pulling back some thread. I saved this vintage cotton thread to do my setting, just because the manual says use a 50 weight cotton thread. But uh, here we are at uh, zero. Okay, so I'm going to put some tension on there, three or four. What I want to see is if I push in that pin, which would be the equivalent of you raising the presser bar, if I push that in, does it release tension? And it does. So I can pull out my work from under the needle. So I think I got it set. After all those little hassles, <laughs> I think that I have it set. So let me pull out my thread here. And I've got one thing uh, left to do, and that's to put that tension pin releasing lever back in the front here. Since I took that out. And uh, the thing to watch for with this machine is going to be if that indicator bar that was bent and I bent back, it seemed very strong. Is it going to, is it weak now and is it eventually going to bend again? But I don't know, it felt hard. It took a lot of effort to bend that back into place with the end of a screwdriver. So, if you remember this part, this is the return spring. So when the lever isn't lifted, it just pushes it away so it doesn't interfere with the tension pin. And it sits right in here. And we'll have to see. We need to put in the hinge screw, right? So let me get uh, let me get that. I'm just going to put a drop of oil. Of course, I have to clean this whole body still. You can see, even after I've done the videos to put stuff back together afterwards I take it right back off <laughs> so I can clean the body later but see if I can whoop, there we go see if I can get this up now one thing to watch out for is that the lever gets stuck um, down on the threads and doesn't get all the way up on that flat part below the head up on the hinge part and then it will be wonky in there and won't, and won't work properly I'll just back it up a little get it started and then I'm going to kind of wiggle that a little bit as I put it in to make sure that I'm getting it up there And the way I can tell is that that lever itself is up flush against the underside of the screw head. I don't see any gaps there. Okay. Just trying to uh, prevent some common little errors people make the first time they're doing this. So that's good and tight now. And if I had my lifting lever it would lift this and rock it right 
So what I want to see is, I got it on four tension. When I lift this now, is it going to release tension on the disc? So my discs are very tight, right? So lifting the presser bar would lift this up. And now look how loose everything is. So all my fixes worked. Um, fixing that stud that was uh, bent and pinched and uh, fixing the indicator crossbar that was bent away from the pin so the pin couldn't reach it and then fixing the bent stop screw all that worked and I have a normal operating tension unit and I, I like this style of tension unit quite a bit. But this is a very, very nice. Uh, you know, all the modern machine now, they're hidden inside. You can't even see if they're working. They're very hard to get to on some of them. Some of them you can't fix. Even though this had really three, three problems, um, they were fixable. You know, and it's, and it's working. Yeah, hey. A long one, but important. If you don't have tension, you don't have sewing. Period. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I hope that was worth your time. You know, I've done a lot of tension videos. You might have seen a couple new things there, right? <laughs> so, please come back and watch some more of my videos, okay? In the meantime, take care of yourself.